Hello. Well, uh, this isn't quite the setup that I wanted, but hopefully um, things are going live on the page. It's quite hard to see what's actually going on. I don't know if the sound is happening or anything like that. Um, I don't know if you write, I haven't done this before on Facebook, so um, in quite the same way. Try using different software and things, but this is just using the basic Facebook streaming thing. Um, so I can't tell if anybody's there or if you want to do a comment or anything, but I thought we'd just kick off and see how it goes. I want to have a cup of tea. Um, so cheers. This is, uh, oh, it's gone a bit cold now. It's, it's, that's how long it's taken me to uh, set up the video. So this is Ceylon, I think, Ceylon tea, which I'm having black. Yeah. So, um, Hi, I'm going to try and do some uh, live video streams, uh, hopefully with a bit more success and getting them set up next time. So if people have questions, things that they'd like me to talk about, um, whatever topic, that's absolutely fine. Um, you know, bound to be mainly sort of book related, writing related, that sort of thing. Um, that would be great. If you want to know other stuff, you know, highest prime number, all that kind of thing, I can work on that. You know, that's, that's probably, that can't be that hard, can it? Um, you know, we'll have a go. How big is the universe? That sort of thing. We'll, we'll do that if I can find a bit of paper to scribble it on. Shouldn't take too long. Um, that, you know, how, how much sugar is in one of those little packets of sugar you get? You know, we'll get those, we'll measure those. We don't know. These are the, these are the big questions in life. Um, Okay, so briefly then, um, just have a little quick chat about what I'm working on at the moment. So slightly in between things, which is interesting, it's always a bit of an um, odd time when you're writing something because when you're doing a novel and you, you've always got it in front of you, you've always got that, when you have to finish it, you know, you say you're saying, oh, this is going to be 70,000, 80,000 words, whatever, then you've always got that target in front of you and you're hitting it. You're trying to, you're trying to go for it every day and you're thinking, how many words have I done? Have I chipped away at it? And, you know, at first it seems like the odd, you know, 1,000 here, 2,000 there. I mean, that sounds like a lot if, if, you, if you're not putting stuff out regularly, I guess. But if you are, then that deadline feels a long way away. You know, you think, oh, I've got to get 80,000 of these yet. Um, so that oh somebody's joined so i can see somebody hello josie <laughs> so, good on you. always rely on josie for support um but anyway you've always got it in front of you and then you're editing it and you've always got that point in front of you and you're trying to get to the end and you, it's all you're always at working towards something and then you've got to sort of edit it again and again and however many times it takes to get it right so when you actually finish something and put it up it's actually quite a strange thing to do because you think well what should i do now Shall I start something new, something new and shiny in a totally different direction? Shall I, you know, do do another one in the same? And um, people ask about um, about ideas. Is it hard to get ideas? And and no, really, as I'm sure that people you probably heard say, that's kind of the easy bit because you can once you get into the swing of thinking up ideas, you you can say to yourself, you know, I could sit here and think of six ideas for stories. Um, for new things or existing things and it's that isn't the hard thing the hard thing is saying well what's going to work what will i really feel excited enough about to um push through all those all those days and weeks and the hours at the keyboard that will that well i will enjoy it and then if i'm enjoying it hopefully the readers will enjoy it as well if i'm finding it exciting you hope the readers will find it exciting if you're getting to the point where I can't wait to, you know, finish the chapter, start the next one, get to the end, that's all That's all good. That's what you want, that kind of feeling of momentum that hopefully then readers will, will share that excitement and, and want to get through to the end of the book. I uh, really just want something that people are going to enjoy. Of course, not everybody enjoys everything. Um, so when you actually finish what do you do? So I've just been working on a, a short piece for an upcoming anthology, which I'm well ahead of time because um, there are anthologies called the Expanding Universe. They're they're fun anthologies. They're, they're great things. Oh, hello, Linda. 
which is quite funny you can see people coming out um so they're edited by sci-fi author big selling sci-fi author craig martell and um they've had some some very big names in there as well and there's expanding universe one two three and four and not all are still available as ebooks because what craig does and maybe I should say the reason for this, it's so that he can be very, very fair to the authors, is he publishes them for a limited time, so they're in Kindle Unlimited, but then he very kindly lets people have all their rights back. Now, you can't have something in Kindle Unlimited and have other people publish it, so he has to unpublish the ebooks, and it's not for any reason of, um, it's not a marketing ploy or anything, because at that point, Craig stops collecting any any revenue from that and anyway all he does is he shares it out amongst the authors so um each author gets a share i believe except for uh, craig doesn't take anything for himself so he puts a lot of work into it and he, and he doesn't he doesn't take any money from it at all it's it's about helping other authors get get exposure by by publishing their work um so i'm hoping i don't know if people can comment um it says there's like one or two people watching that i i'm hoping people can hear it as well and i'm hoping the microphone is working because i don't know um i guess you'd probably stop by now it's funny seeing a number go up and down there okay i guess i'll find out later if the sound <laughs> oh dear um okay so anyway so that's the reason why some of these other anthologies aren't still out but the expanding universe 4 is and there is a um finalist in the nebula awards in there um who's got a name who's really really hard to pronounce so i haven't got it in front of me and i don't want to get it wrong oh oh there's a question oh great i'm hoping that josie can hear me okay um i'll just get to that in a second so um yeah so that's what I've, i'm i'm writing a story for the next expanding universe five that's what i'm doing and i've, I've just kind of finished that i've just been doing a little bit of tweaking to that today um anthologies are uh, put together by various small presses large presses magazines um websites facebook groups there's there's a number of different people will put them out um the ones i tend to know about tend to be science fiction ones so what i can sort of speak to how the expanded universe gets put out um and there's another one who i think the name i don't want to get the names wrong because i get people muddled up but patrice fitzgerald um i can't think what hers is called um but she does them sci-fi anthologies and i tend to hear about them through groups on facebook um craig's is particularly in the there's a group called 20 books to 50k which is one word so that's two zero books to and then five zero and k uh, which is which is set up by uh, by michael anderley who's a best-selling author and Craig does a lot of work in there as well, helping out authors. So you hear about that one there. Uh, and I believe that's where I also heard about the, I think Patrice Fitzgerald's have different titles. So this might be on the stars, something like that. I mean, that's something I've submitted to either one or two of those over the years and not got in. Um, so they all have their own submission requirements. And, and when you hear about them, you try and, um, fit very closely to what they want um i don't quite understand it when you'll get somebody say okay i want an eight thousand word story and people will start commenting and say oh is it okay if i do 10 or 12 or something they kind of think well that's not really <laughs> you know if 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 um if you take your car to the garage and to have it serviced and they say well i haven't serviced it but i have changed the tires instead because i thought you know what the heck i just felt like doing tires today um you wouldn't be too pleased with that you know if if, <laughs> if you order something and say yeah we delivered something else because we didn't really feel we weren't really feeling it today you know we um we didn't want to deliver tables so we brought you a chair instead you know 
so you kind of you to get into an anthology when you can hear about them uh, just online really um you would um read very carefully what the submission requirements are and if you don't know if it's not clear if it's not obvious then you'd ask and just make sure and for those i submit them in the font people ask in the spacing they ask in the paragraph spacing they ask to the word count they ask in time on time i don't say oh sorry i haven't finished it yet um so in other words you you do a professional job and that way um you sort of earn a and a professional reputation as well. Um, sometimes if you don't quite hit the brief, that's it's because there's a lot of competition. Um, so the Patrice Fitzgerald ones, I'd say I'm pretty sure I've submitted a story, um, I think it was a variation on the same story. And, you know, it didn't quite hit the theme that they wanted and there was a lot of competition and maybe perhaps they had bigger name authors who were coming in and so I didn't get into that one well, that's that's fine that's the way it is it's um lots and lots and lots of people are trying to get into these things sometimes magazines like online magazines will run them and they tend to be kind of genre specific so there might be say a horror one or something like that um yeah I've also trying to think that was probably just on facebook as well so a couple of my short horror stories were originally sold to anthologies um and that that's really just online contact so i'm sorry if that's um that's rambling it, it whether it matters that you've been published or not i think some of the more commercial ones if the payout is larger then they are they will probably take you, your profile into account but mainly i think it it comes down to um the quality of the sample that you send in and um just try and you know be courteous and professional that sort of thing and that that will go a long way i think um it's so it's really just keeping your ears to the ground and there are a lot of Facebook groups if you're interested in that kind of thing for, for writers at the moment and a quick search will, will help you find them. There are also, if a search for something like uh, fiction markets and short story markets, things like that, they will help you to see who's, who's paying out. Sometimes some websites will put together whole lists. Okay, I'm sorry if that's rather a long rambling answer. I'm quite a <laughs> long rambling person. <laughs> So um, I don't know if anybody else has any, any other questions that came up as a comment there, which actually worked, which is good. I hope the sound quality is okay because um, I do have a good microphone, but you never know how the, 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 the streaming side of it goes. It might be uploading wrongly or not. So, so yeah, I'm looking at um deciding what to do next just going back to yeah uh, to my work um it is sometimes very tempting to go off on a on a tangent to go into something different partly just for enjoyment um and to keep a bit of variety going but uh, sometimes you just get a an idea like i've had an idea that i want to do some crime fiction for a very long time um i read quite a bit of crime fiction tends a mixture of contemporary stuff and i i've read the uh, sherlock holmes stories loads of times and the um if you ever get a chance to hear the bbc um radio the drum radio drums they did very very good really well done with them um, with clive merrison and michael williams who's sadly no, no longer with us uh really good versions of um Sherlock Holmes, much better than the various film and TV ones, really good radio drama versions. And I believe they are, those actors are the only two people ever to have recorded the entire canon of the original Sherlock Holmes stories from start to finish. I think there's about 60 um, and they did them all. So thankfully, Michael Williams did that before he passed away. So they're really well done. I like them a lot. Um, but I also like contemporary stuff, uh, you know, things like Ian Rankin. I've read most of those, uh, the Rebus books. And uh, 
I used to read quite a lot of Agatha Christie, not really anymore, but that was way back, way back. Um, and some of the sort of Scandinavian stuff I quite like. The, um, I'm not sure how you pronounce it, Joe Nesbo ones. I've just got into those. The Harry Hole. I think it's pronounced holy, but uh, Harry Holy. <laughs> um, but it's spelt whole. And so, you know, I, I quite like that. Quite like to do my own take on not exactly a detective. Um, I don't particularly want to do a police procedural. I, I think the research would overwhelm me. I don't really have good contacts and things like that to to get all that right. Um, I think I'd be more in the vein of a sort of, you know, Sherlock Holmes style character. Um, modern day stuff I, I would do, though. So I am looking at that. I'm looking at putting together something short. But of my various things, the most popular thing at the moment certainly is my Brent Bolster books, the um, Dal G for Gravity and uh, Dead Men Don't Disco and things like that. Uh, and the Serana identity, um, that is what people are reading at the moment. Um, so I kind of, I'd be very happy to do another one. I've got some ideas. I've, I've got a bit of an outline kicking around already. Um, and I do find the ideas for that come fairly thick and fast because, uh, I like those characters. I like the, I did, I just kind of sort of got under my skin a little bit. I like the way that um, Raw Gibb, who's an alien, he's kind of uh, very human in uh, all sorts of kind of strange ways. And although Brent is a bit of a, a fool and a shallow character, uh, it's deliberately so, and you can have quite a lot of fun at his expense and so on. You know, there's there's a mixture. He, he has little depths. He's not entirely shallow as, as the books progress. But um, yeah, I think I think they're going OK and people do seem to be liking them. And, you know, Lord knows we could all do with a laugh at the moment. Um, so they're fairly harmless fun. And I've always liked humorous fiction. You know, I was a light bulb went off in my head when I discovered Douglas Adams, which came out when I was a teenager, I think. So um, that was good timing. Just absolutely loved uh, reading the books. I wasn't so much into the radio plays of those, actually. I, I found them through the books first, and that kind of, to me, was was great. Um, but, you know, funny things. I've, I've been reading funny, silly things for a long time. Um, the, um, yeah, I mean, I used to, because there wasn't such a thing as YA f fiction, there was no young adult things. When I when I was a young adult, I used to read things like P.G. Woodhouse, Um because I was reading adult books when I was, you know, still quite young, still um, quite a young teenager. And so I discovered the P.G. Woodhouse. And, and in a way, there's a little bit of a, I've not really spoken about this before, but that's why this is nice. It comes across that as a personal thing that my Brent Buster books are a bit of a nod towards P.G. Woodhouse in a very, a bit of a, an homage in a slight undercover sort of way um, in that the character's, I hope have that sort of ridiculousness in a fairly gentle, humorous way, um, which I don't know if you've ever read any PG Woodhouse, then you might kind of know what I mean. So that it is silly. It's tomfoolery, but kind of sort of relatable as well in a funny way, although they're not Aristos in quite so much. Um, but perhaps I have like aliens instead of aristocrats, you know, I have the, the rather silly, um, you know, the uh, the the officers and so on, and the the, the civil servants, and they're kind of, in a way, they're my sort of Wodehousian or Woodhousian um, characters, in that they're sort of slightly caricature. Well, they are caricatures, but they're you know, they're fairly affectionate, um, fairly affectionate. You might call it a, a pastiche of the sort of military type sci-fi and space fleet type sci-fi and all those things jumbled together because I, I love all that stuff you know big trekkie um so uh, i'm more of a star trek than star wars but um you know I, I i've had fun with those as well but it's just that's partly the age when you meet them i think you know i was i was a, a kid growing up with star trek um and i was almost a little bit over it by the time star wars came around but you know they're great spectacles um 
Yeah, thank you, Josie. Uh, that's I can. I'm glad you like the Brent Bolster books. Um, yeah, if if I do a, a modern day detective, I, I think I could have some fun with that. I'm not quite sure which way it would go. I it does. Um, crime, I think, can lend itself to short stories um, because so long as you've got a, an incident and some sort of crime, it doesn't have to be a murder, I don't think. But then you can make uh, it sort of complete because short stories need a. I, th I think kind of the form becomes more important in a short story because I, I love short. I love reading short stories. I love writing them. The um, you do have to sort of get through your form a bit in a bit more of a rigid. I don't know if that's the right word, but in slightly more of a structured way because you don't have the um, you don't have the the length to play with. So you have to get into your characters, into your action. You have to get things built up. You know, if you're going to create tension and so on, you don't have much to do it with. You've you've got to you've got to do it quite quickly. Uh, if you're going to build up complications through it, you've got to got to make them all happen. But you can do that with a crime story. In that you know, hope it the incident happens. You go through your clues and your suspects, and you have your red herrings and your twists and turns, and then hopefully it's solved um, one way or the other. Usually, people happen to be solved, don't they? Whether people get away or not, I don't know. Um, because like. Sherlock Holmes would famously sometimes say, let people, you know, let he would let them go because he would take a moral judgment and he wouldn't call the police and things and say, no, that's, they've been punished enough sort of thing. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's, I think it's on the card somewhere, but I haven't, dis one thing I haven't decided is, is kind of how, how gritty that would be because I think they'd probably be on the cozier side um because crime can a lot of crime goes very dark at the moment and some of the crime things on tv i've just sort of stopped watching them because um you know that it's like let's let's see how gruesomely we can kill people and one after the other you know and it, it turns into a bit of a wholesale slaughter in the most bizarre ways and it's it just gets a bit too grim i think for me so um I think it would probably towards the cozier end of things. Um, you know, there might be a bit of sort of people might get shot or whatever, but uh, not so common in this country, of course, but uh, things could happen to them. I don't want to give too much away because, you know, I, I'm kind of simmering away with these ideas, but I think it would be fairly gentle stuff, you know, kind of uh, Sunday afternoon Sunday evening TV viewing, I think, rather than uh, <laughs> rather than some of the strange carnage and things. I mean, I tried to read. Uh, I can't remember if it was the girl with the dragon tattoo or the the one that came first. Anyway, uh, so I picked up one of those second hand, and um, actually, I I never really got through to the. I know people say it's quite gruesome, but I didn't really get that far. Um, because I found the style really dull, I'm afraid. It was just, um, she went to a shop and she bought a newspaper and a packet of sweets and a this and a bottle of water and a, three other things. And then she went to a clothes shop and bought a pair of jeans and a jumper. And then she went to another clothes shop and bought some shoes. And she said, oh, okay. It's very like that. I don't know if you've tried it. That's why the book's so thick, I think. Um, so I didn't really get to the uh, the gory violence. But um, yeah, that's kind of uh, a bit of a side. So I don't think it'd be that kind of thing. Um, okay, I'm kind of, I've gone for longer than I meant to really. I am rambling away, but hopefully, what I'm hoping is if I start doing these and then I'll say to people in the Awkward Squad and get the newsletter, yay. <laughs> I'll say to them, okay, I'm gonna do these live streams. And then if you want to, um, you want to come along, ask me questions either on the time or in advance, because you know we're on different time zones and things. Um, then I, I'll be able to answer your questions and give you a shout out and things like that, and uh, see what kind of things people would like to know. And I can't promise I won't ramble on at length because uh, once you get me talking, that is what I tend to <laughs> tend to do. You know, spend all day sitting here on my own, nobody to talk to. So now I'm rambling away to you guys. Um, I thought it was the dog. Um, so she doesn't she doesn't reply very often. 
you know, just occasionally says, I'll oh, be quiet, I'm trying to sleep, things like that. And um, <laughs> anyway, I think I might sign off about that. Um, I'll try next time to get the camera. I feel very zoomed out here, but uh, you can see all the clutter and junk in my <laughs> I mean, why is this? Why does my guy tidy up? Well, it's because I'm too busy, um, busy, you know, writing, and uh, yeah, I need to do a bit of maintenance on my fish tank as well. I can see in the video it looks kind of murky, but uh, they are happy. Don't worry, they are all okay. They're trying to get in on the action. Um, clown lurches occasionally, um, occasionally pretend to be dead for some reason. They sort of do this thing where they go, they're very busy most of the time, and all of a sudden you, you find them lying on their back or on their side, and you think, oh no, and then they, as soon as you go near the aquarium, they'll jump up and start swimming around. They're strange little creatures. And uh, they can see me and they want feeding, so that is why they're dancing them down there, I think. Okay. Um, I don't know if anybody, I think it's, it's hard to tell. I think it's possibly like one person watching. I don't know. But anyway, I'll, 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 it leaves, stays up there on the page, hopefully. So um, I will give it a shot and I'll be able to listen back to it later and see if the sound and everything is okay. All right. Okay. I will um, end there, I think. Thank you very much for watching at whatever time you're doing. And thank you. Uh, looks like Claire. Hello, Claire was, I didn't say hello to, and there was Linda and Josie. And I hope you got something out of it. Um, even if you only thought, what a fine hat. Yes, it's very good. Um, I'm going to wear this hat for my videos because I, why not? Um, <laughs> oh, good. Josie says the sound is fine. That is a big relief, actually, because I thought I might just have been sort of miming to people for half <laughs> an hour. Which would do. yeah, I did think. I mean, I don't know if there's an appetite for it. I did, I spent about half an hour trying to decide whether I should do readings and things because I, I quite like reading my work out loud. And I kind of thought, I'm not sure that's the way people particularly want to experience it. Um, uh, as she says, wear the hat, yeah, okay, it's my, my camera hat from now on. Um, but I, I, I might do sort of some little snippets, but I, I. I, I was thinking about reading through a whole book, but um, I would love to get myself set up and do um, rec recordings because I do like, re I used to, used to be a teacher and I used to read aloud a lot to class. So I'm kind of used to reading stories. Uh, it's my big thing when I was a teacher. Cause I, one of my huge enthusiasms uh, and still is really uh, is to get kids into books and into reading and they do love it given a bit of a chance and one way to get them in is to read them bits of, of books in a lively way and do silly voices and things like that I had teachers who did it for me when I was a kid and that was you know my best part of the day for me was listening to the teacher read a story you know used to have like watership down and things a chap a chapter a day sort of thing. just loved it uh, I think kids still do you know so um if you've got kids or grandkids, read to them, read to them. Yeah, because it's really important to share that enjoyment. Um, and I would do that, but I, I kind of think it's, I don't know, it seems slightly odd to do it on, on the camera. Maybe I should give it a go anyway. But what I, I would love to do is to um, put them out as proper audio books as well. Get the recordings done, make sure it's all nice and clean, no silly background noises and things like that. And, uh, and we'll, I'll put them out. So it's nearly half an hour, actually. I thought I'd do about five minutes. Um, can't think of anything else. Tea definitely cold. So I'll sign off for now and look after yourselves. Take care and happy reading um, and happy April Fool's Day. Have a good April. If it's spring where you are, enjoy it. And if not, sorry <laughs> but uh I don't, what is it if you're in the southern hemisphere at the moment i don't know i can't even uh can't think about that at the moment so uh, <laughs> all right all right take care then i'll press the button and bye